Well, next week, we're teaming up with Vitalant for the KCR 3 Blood Drive for Life, and you can help out. Right now, we're joined by Vitalant West Division uh, Vice President Mitzi Edgecombe. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. All right, so you are leading Vitalant's efforts on the West Coast from Southern California all the way north to Spokane. So how do things look right now when it comes to the blood supply, especially for our local blood supply here in the Valley? Well, we are a bit challenged. Um, we're having some of the same challenges that other blood centers are outside of the Vitalant Blood Center um, enterprise. Uh, we're just we're just challenged with things like weather. Um, certainly, all of the viruses and things that are making their way through, and um, it makes it difficult. We are at about a at less than a two day supply on our Type O blood, and that comfort level is really more between four and five days. Wow, it seems. More often than not now, we're starting to hear more about just how uh, short folks are when it comes to blood supplies. Why, why do you think that is? I think it's it's being compounded. If you if we look at the pandemic, life was very different prior to the pandemic, and I don't know that we'll ever see that that lifestyle again. But I think there's two major elements. Uh, one is um, when you consider how many individuals are working from home now, that has had a significant impact on the number and the size of mobile blood drives that we can um, we can host or our sponsors and and blood drive coordinators can host. Prior to the ban pandemic, it was about sixty percent of our blood was collected on mobile blood drives where 40% was collected in one of our uh, fixed donation centers. That has really changed to more of a 50-50 mix. So that's a significant, significant piece of this. The secondary element is we, um, as everyone was going virtual, high schools and colleges play a really big role in supporting the blood supply and where a majority of our first time donors um, experience blood donation. So we lost a couple years with those schools. So what we're really having to do is, is sort of reset and go back to some basics and train people that this is really important and this is really service learning for the school. So, so that is the challenge ahead of us and, and really looking to how do we do business a little bit differently with, um, with our new lifestyles. Of course, we're trying to get the word out that we are going to be having a blood drive next week. So what are some of the details that folks need to know in regards to that? Well, certainly go to vitalent.org for, for all of the details, but in terms of, of general eligibility, um, you need to be at least 16 years old, you need to have parental consent, you need to weigh a minimum of 110 pounds, um, be in good health. It's really helpful if you drink a, a lot of fluids in the couple days before, be well hydrated, a good meal. Um, really important is make an appointment, go online, make an appointment. This is another thing that changed during the pandemic is we were, we were really encouraging and in many cases requiring appointments, but we have found that it really makes for a smoother blood drive, better donor flow, and really creates a better donor experience, which ideally will get people to return again and again. All right, Mitzi, thank you so much for your time today. We really thank appreciate you. everything. Thank you very much. Appreciate your assistance. All right, and again, you can scan the QR code that's at the bottom of your screen to go straight to the website to sign up for an appointment. That blood drive is happening January 4th through 7th at Sierra College in Rockland and January 5th and 6th at the Sacramento Central YMCA.